constitutional law to supreme court of india in detail constitution appointment qualifications and impeachment of supreme court judges independence of judiciary judicial activism and jurisdiction of supreme court is the topic for discussion today this constitution law to subject from second subject second semester was taken up long back i uploaded earlier two lectures from this subject first lecture was judicial review second lecture was uh, amendment of the indian constitution these two were uh, these two are very important from examination of point of view after long gap i am taking up this uh, uh, supreme court of india under union judiciary uh, union judiciary as a third lecture uh, this lecture is very important not only from examination point of view but also from a knowledge point of view every member of legal profession profession is expected to have this knowledge uh, this this lecture i will cover when supreme court was established prior to establishment of supreme court how our indian appeals were sent to UK, england for a trial and uh, qualification appointment and impeachment of supreme court judges independence of judiciary judicial activism power powers of high court supreme court judges and uh, finally jurisdiction of supreme court including advisory jurisdiction is the topic for discussion today before going to take up this uh, uh, lecture let me take just half minute to pray god pay homage to my reverend parents late raga appara late srimati kantaratnu and my wife late mrs baliwada tirumala gauri i express my deep sense of gratitude to all my god fathers who are instrumental for what i am now i express my heartfelt thanks to uh, publishers of uh, various uh, articles and research papers in internet whose works uh, i have made use of for bringing out this lecture finally it is my uh, strict duty to express my deep sense of gratitude to my student friends who are means mainly instrumental for what i am now here the supreme court of india is the apex court of our country apex court means the highest court to hear appeals from various courts various courts in the various courts and tribunals that is judicial and quasi judicial bodies in india earlier we did not have any supreme court in india before uh, constitution came into force uh, in uh, there were three presidency presidency towns in india madras bombay calcutta in these three presidency towns high courts were established high court of madras high court of bombay high court of calcutta uh, in uh, from uh, 19, 1865 onwards under indian high court act 1861 all appeals from madras bombay and calcutta went to uh, privy council or king in council or sovereign council located in england Uh, nearly 6000 kilometers from india then uh, it was uh, found uh, inconvenient it was uh, found very difficult to send all these appeals uh, for final trial uh, to uk sir sir harsing gaur sir harsing gaur uh, uh, in 1920 sir harsing gaur in 1920 uh, made a proposal made a Uh, proposal for establishment of uh, apex court uh, in our country and uh, this uh, uh, proposal made by sir harsing gaur in 1920 got fructified and supreme federal court of india was, sir harsing gaur made a proposal in parliament on uh, 26th march uh, 2021 with the proposal initiated by the sir harsing gaur then a parliament parliamentarian Uh, federal court of india was established on 10th october uh, established on 1st october 1932 so till even though the federal court of india was established at delhi 
as the apex apex court to hear appeals from uh, high courts of madras bombay and calcutta uh, most of the appeals uh, were referred to privy council because federal court of uh, india was not given independent uh, uh, independent autonomy independent powers to try all the cases subsequently the federal by an act was passed extension of jurisdiction to federal court act was passed and uh, federal court was made independent to hear all appeals from three high courts of madras bombay and calcutta and uh, with effect from 10th october 1949 even though federal court of india was established in october 1932 uh, till 1949 uh, 1949 nearly 17 years nearly 17 years uh, many appeals went to privy council or king in council or sovereign council in england and that uh, king in council privy council also was uh, abolished and uh, supreme court was established on 1st october uh, 2009 that is different i uh, told about uh, i told you this point long back and now uh, the federal court of india uh, independently held all appeals from three high courts of madras bombay and calcutta uh, with effect from 1st october uh, with effect from uh, 10th october 1949 within three and a half months we got our indian constitution on 26th january 1950 immediately the supreme court of india was established under article under article 144 clause 1 so the apex court of india the highest court of judicature apex court of india was established at delhi on 28th january 1950 so this supreme court of india uh, confer, uh, under uh, the the, cons- the by virtue of constitutional provisions enshrined under article 124 to 147 the supreme court of india uh, has been vested with enormous powers wide powers to try all cases uh, to try all cases hear appeals and uh, take up uh, review and uh, uh, specially appeals all variety uh, variety of cases from not only the courts of law but also from tribunals that is uh, quasi judi- judicial tribunals also uh, 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 since the uh, since the establishment of our uh, supreme court now what is the significance of uh, or uh, the uh, contribution of our supreme court what is the role played by supreme court and uh, when it is uh, uh, when it was uh, established or its constitution number of judges judges qualifications uh, uh, e- impeachment of judges all these aspects independence of judiciary uh, judicial activism jurisdiction of supreme court all these aspects we have to discuss in this topic so firstly uh, the supreme when the supreme court of india was established uh, on 28th january 1950 at delhi uh, the number of judges uh, uh, then the number of judges was one to a, one one chief justice and uh, one chief justice and uh, eight uh, uh, seven uh, judges one chief justice and uh, seven judges uh, so one chief justice and seven judges here no uh, one chief justice and seven judges uh, later the number of uh, supreme court number of judges act was passed in the year uh, 2008 and the number of judges was increased to uh, from uh, 8 to 25 so after uh, after uh, in 2008 the number of judges has been increased to uh, 30 from 25 today in supreme court there are uh, 28 judges the maximum number of judges is uh, 30 as on today uh, there is one chief justice of india and uh, 27 judges the at the time of establishment of supreme court the first judge was uh, so hari lal justice hari lal j kaniya was the first chief justice of india in 1950 we along with him there were seven other judges subsequently the number of judges rose to 25 and now 30 practically we have 28 judges one chief justice of india today uh, 
the chief justice 49th we have 49th chief justice uh, by name uh, sri uday umesh lalit ji is the 49th chief justice of our uh, supreme court previously uh, nv ramana rao ji was the chief justice of our uh, supreme court um, uh, uday uh, umesh lalit ji succeeded uh, nv ramana ji and uh, now uh, this month the 50th chief justice of india uh, dr dy chandrachud uh, who is the son of former chief justice of india y v chandrachud is going to uh, is going to become the uh, 50th chief justice of india after uh, in his uh, duration the collegium of uh, collegium for appointment of uh, supreme court judges uh, will be increased to uh, six uh, so far the collegium consists of five members one chief justice and uh, four uh, senior most judges uh, after resuming the office of uh, next chief justice uh, dy chandrachud ji the collegium uh, will con consist of one chief justice of india and uh, senior most five judges this is with reference to number of uh, judges now uh here uh, uh, the next one is uh, so uh, this qua uh, qualification for uh, qualification and uh, appointment of uh, judges qualification and uh, appointment of uh, judges what is the qualification and uh, appointment of uh, judges here uh, appointment of qualification of judges qualification of judges in the sense a person who wants to become supreme court judge must be the citizen of india he must be citizen of india first qualification second qualification uh, he must have acted as he must have served as a judge or chief justice of any high court or different high courts for a period of 5 years that is second qualification uh, third one is uh, uh, either a, a judge or chief justice in one high court or different high courts or he must have been a, high, a practicing advocate in high court or different high courts for a period of 10 years and uh, finally uh, to become high court uh, to become supreme court judge one must be a distinguished jurist in the eyes of uh, in the in, uh, according to uh, president of india so citizen of india uh, number 2 uh, high court judge or chief justice of high court for 5 years one in one high court or different high courts uh, third or uh, either judge or uh, advocate high court advocate for 10 years or distinguished jurist according to uh, in the mind of uh, president of india these are the qualifications in this particular issue case uh, the supreme court judge the high court judge 10 years uh, high court judge having 10 years standing was uh, is qualified to compete for the post of supreme court judge but the uh, advocate uh, possessing 10 years standing in supreme court is not there but however any distinguished jurist according to president of india the supreme court judge uh, the supreme court practicing advocate is found to be a distinguished jurist he may be appointed not only so high uh, supreme court advocate or any other great personality legal uh, uh, possessing uh, uh, outstanding knowledge in uh, legal uh, legal fraternity may be elevated to the position of uh, supreme court however the supreme court judge uh, supreme court advocate advocates practicing in supreme court possessing uh, 10 years and uh, above or not uh, not mentioned for the qualification of supreme court judges and in this connection the supreme court uh, advocates on record the president made a proposal to made a representation to the uh, recent chief justice of india nv ramana nv ramana ji to consider the uh, candidature of supreme court advocate for the position of high court judges and <coughs> supreme court judge this uh, proposal was positively acknowledged, acknowledged by the then uh, for the former chief justice ramana ji and, uh, and uh, the proposal was uh, uh, sent to chief justices of various high courts 
However, there is uproar from the advocates of uh, the bar associations of high courts, uh, by high courts, not to entertain this issue. Uh, what is the? Uh, however, any Supreme Court uh, advocate who is found to be a distinguished jurist in the eyes of uh, president can be elevated to the position of uh, a Supreme Court judge. This is with reference to the qualification of uh, Supreme Court judge. Today, there are. 28 uh, uh, judges, one is Chief Justice of India, Uday Umesh Lalitji and uh, 7 uh, uh, judges of the uh, Supreme Court. Uh, Supreme Court. This, uh, this uh, new Chief Justice of India uh, will be, uh, 50th uh, new just Chief Justice of India will be the Dr. Y.V. Chandrachok, son of uh, former Chief Justice of India, Y.V. Chandrachokji. Y.V. Chandrachokji uh, was in... Uh, acted as the chief justice for the lengthiest time of lengthiest period now coming to the appointment of supreme court judges appointment so we are the executive the fundamental principle of judiciary uh, judiciary is one of the three organs of the government in, in any body in any state any any country there are two bodies one is ruler and other is ruled the ruler is uh, government, ruled is, uh, uh, the ruled is people. So, the people are ruled by the government. This government comprises of three main authorities, executive, legislature and judiciary. According to doctrine of separation of power coined by Montesco, French jurist, these three main organs of government, executive, legislature and judiciary must act independently. One organ should not encroach upon other are gone. Apart from that, this judiciary being a custodian of constitution, being the guardian of constitution, being the uh, custodian of fundamental rights, the, the Supreme Court of India is shouldered with the responsibility of delivering pure and impartial justice and to protect the interest and to and to uplift the ideals, go ideals and goals enshrined in the constitution as uh, uh, constitution and uh, so many lot of responsibility is vested with uh, uh, Supreme Court to deliver pure and impartial justice. So in order to deliver pure and impartial justice, independence of judiciary is sine qua non in a democratic country like India. Because if unless the judges of the Supreme Court are independent, absolutely independent, free from the interference and free from the influence of political parties, executive and legislature, they will not be able to deliver pure and impartial justice. That is the reason why <coughs> the Supreme Court, the appointment of judges, the appointment of judges and uh, termination or impeachment of judges is made very rigid, very strict. It is not so easy to remove the judge of uh, High Court or Supreme Court. The same procedure is uh, followed for appointment of uh, appointment uh, and removal or impeachment of High Court judges and uh, Supreme Court judges. Earlier, uh, earlier the Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice and uh, and uh, high, uh, other judges were appointed by the president of india on the advice of on the advice of chief justice of india and other 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 senior more judges if necessary for appointment of oh, high court judge or chief uh, chief justice uh, the on uh, consultation with chief justice of india and uh, in consultation with the respective chief justice and outgoing chief justice and uh, uh, other senior most judges in that way the president of india used to appoint the judges because there is a lot of interference of executive uh, the president of india major role was played by ministry of minister for law and uh, company affairs uh, and uh, the minister for law and uh, ministry of law the, the minister of the, the the minister for law and company affairs and president of india the executive had to play uh, play crucial role in appointment of supreme court judges and high court judges and uh, this issue uh, was uh, challenged subsequently in uh, 1982 in uh, S.P. Gupta vs. Uh, Union of India. S.P. Gupta vs. Union of India, judges transfer case uh, and is, uh, this is a landmark judgment and uh, three, three judges cases 
the first case is uh, sp gupta versus union of india that is first judges case and in this particular case the president in consultation with the uh, chief justice was uh, questioned whether the consultation and uh, consultation is equal to concurrence so it is not the, the, the it was held in that particular case consult consultation is different uh, concurrence is different subsequently in uh, 1993 and uh, 19 the advocates on supreme court advocates on record versus union of india subsequently in 98 uh, the supreme court gave advisory opinion after scrutiny all this in uh, in the meanwhile the supreme court uh, uh, the supreme court made it very clear the the interference of the supreme the judiciary to be made independent there should not be any interference of the executive that is why the appointment of supreme court judges and high court judges must be made by the collegium the collegium that comprising of chief justice and senior most judges uh, senior most judges only and there should not be any interference of the uh, executive uh, this uh, opinion was expressed and uh, the supreme court uh, accordingly the supreme court uh, judges that is chief justice and uh, uh, other judges are appointed by the uh, are final uh, candidature of uh, these judges was finalized by collegium consisting of chief justice and uh, four other chief justice uh, chief justices when the the names of uh, uh, this collegium comprising of chief justice and uh, four other uh, judges a uh, finalized <coughs> the <coughs> the proposal is sent to the uh, ministry of uh, law and company affairs and uh, that uh, then uh, that ministry will send it to the uh, prime minister prime minister in turn will send it to president of india the president of uh, india uh, by by uh, issue uh, uh, appoint by warrant in hand uh, the uh, judges of uh, supreme court high court similarly high court judges also uh, there is a collegium in high court level uh, one chief justice and four uh, four senior most judges and uh, to candidature to be confirmed uh, two senior not less uh, chief justice and uh, uh, of the state and uh, two more senior judges uh, must uh, recommend the candidates of fed when once the collegium in state level is uh, finalized this matter is to be ratified by the uh, collegium and this uh, high court judges uh, uh, panel will be routed through uh, chief minister and then uh, uh, then to union ministry uh, supreme court collegium and ultimately the president of india india will appoint this so today the college uh, the supreme high court uh, 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 the appoint judges of high courts and supreme court are appointed by the collegium this concept of collegium was not there either in indian constitution or any other legislation central legislation or state legislation and uh, this uh, collegium was coined by the supreme court in three judges case that is uh, gupta's case 1982 uh, sp gupta vs union of india uh, supreme court advocates on record uh, versus U union of india second class and sub thirdly in uh, sub uh, advisory opinion this was there the uh, justice bhagwati uh, and uh, js uh, uh, justice bhagwati ultimately there are so many debates took place so far as this collegium is concerned and ultimately in order to uh, in order to uh, provide good role uh, crucial role to uh, executive uh, the uh, union government passed an act uh, passed a 99 uh, amendment act uh, in 2014 uh, proposing the constitution of national judicial appointments committee earlier executive and subsequently collegium and again the government union government brought about amendment to indian constitution 99 amendment act with that uh, uh, there was uh, the uh, un Nas national judicial appointment commission uh, was to be constituted this committee uh, this commission will have to appoint the judges of high courts and supreme court this uh, commission comprises of chief justice of india as ex officio member law minister as ex officio member and uh, two members appointed uh, two members nominated by president chief justice and opposition party leader leader opposition leader of the opposition party in lok sabha 
they were to a uh, supreme minister chief justice and leader of the opposition party three per three persons uh, nominate two persons one person is uh, uh, from open other person is uh, other person is uh, sc st bc oc or even lady candidate so accordingly as per this national judicial appointment commission this uh, committee to appoint judges of high court and uh, supreme court judges consisted of chief justice of india law minister and two other members so this uh, uh, this national judicial commission was uh, challenged but it interfere in this uh, uh, interference of executive is there so that the autonomy of judiciary will be uh, will be cut tail and therefore the appointment of judicial appointments uh, uh, the constitution of national judicial appointment committee was declared unconstitutional and void and ultimately today uh, the judges of high court and supreme court are appointed by the collegium collegium means collegium uh, through the in india we have three tier system three tier system the union judiciary uh, the judiciary in india is headed by union uh, judiciary that is supreme court of india uh, high court in union level supreme court of india state level high court and district level subordinate courts are there this is called three system judiciary or three tier system judiciary we can say so now this is with reference to appointment of judges high court judges and <coughs> supreme court judges because the collegium there is a lot of procedure for appointment of high court judges and supreme court judges even the chief justice even the chief minister or prime minister uh, will not have any voice with reference to the with regard to the appointment of the high court judges and the supreme court judges technically speaking and now coming to the uh, removal of judges this when once the high court judges and supreme court judges are appointed supreme court judges will continue in office till the age of till the till 65 years uh, 65 years high court judges will continue office till 62 uh, 62 years this is the position now removal or impeachment of uh, supreme court uh, judges or high court judges so because the judges are uh, the the judiciary is vested with the enormous power for to ensure independence of judiciary judiciary the, the, the members of the judiciary high court judges and supreme court judges are conferred enormous powers they they are given so many privileges and immunities to act independently to to act independently so that they will be able to deliver pure and impartial justice so but for which they won't be able to deliver pure and impartial justice if executive interferes legislature interferes they won't be able to deliver uh, correct uh, judgment and uh, landmark uh, judgments so that is why uh, the judiciary to be independent it must be absolutely separated from executive and legislature that is the executive so ministers so prime chief minister or prime minister uh, legislators so parliamentarians so Uh, parliamentarians opposition party leaders so speaker uh, such people should not interfere in the uh, in the business of uh, supreme court judges or high court judges <coughs> that is uh, another thing so that is why if any high court judge or supreme court judge is to be imposed removed from service a proposal to that effect is uh, to be initiated before lok sabha and rajya sabha Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha minimum 50 members in Rajya Sabha and half of the members in Lok Sabha. A proposal with re to with reference to impeachment. The impeachment move has to be made before Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. And if the impeachment move is uh, if if there is a two third majority, then only High Court judge or Supreme Court judge will be removed. Otherwise. Uh, the high court judge or supreme court uh, judge cannot be removed from service so easily if anybody wants to initiate this uh, uh, impeachment uh, pr procedure any ruling party members or uh, opposition party members or whomsoever may be so and so high court judge or supreme court judge is corrupt they committed some irregularities or any allegation is there an impeachment uh, move is to be made it is done by sufficient member of by member and first of all the impeachment move has to be made before lok sabha and then rajya sabha if uh, the impeachment move is uh, uh, cleared with two third majority then only that uh, high court judge or supreme court judge can be removed from 
survey. So far in India, since 1952 52 till date, no High Court judge or Supreme Court judge has been uh, impeached. In British rule, one judge was removed uh, long back in 18th, but uh, since 1952 till date, uh, no no High Court judge or Supreme Court have been has been removed from the service on against impeachment move. However, impeachment moves were made several times. Uh, uh, several times and the first uh, in 1990 uh, the impeachment move was finalized in 1993 and uh, 1993 justice ramaswamiji uh, during pv nasivara uh, then prime minister uh, pv nasivara uh, government time uh, justice ramaswamiji uh, impeachment impeachment move was made and uh, then the impeachment uh, uh, impeachment move was made but uh, it was defeated for lack of two third majority in 2018 uh, started from 2017 chief justice jacob depak mesra the the opposition party congress and other party members made impeachment move this also could not be Crucified the justice Jenkaranji, Chief Justice Jenkaran Supreme High Court impeachment move was made. Uh, impeachment was made. One uh, uh, impeachment move was uh, similarly one Calcutta High Court uh, judge impeachment move was made, but uh, she resigned before the uh, before the matter brought to the uh, brought to the house. Some Gujarat uh, Padiawala something. Uh, uh, one uh, Gujarat High Court judge impeachment move, move was made in uh, Andhra Pradesh Telangana High Court uh, uh, Nagarjuna Reddy G Justice Nagarjuna Reddy impeachment was moved but all these impeachment moves were not uh, uh, fructified and uh, no High Court judge or Supreme Court judge so far has been removed uh, on the ground of impeachment move so this is with reference to impeachment of the uh, removal of uh, High Court judges. Now coming to the the appointment co collegium and this is over. And uh, now today for appointment of judges, uh, uh, one senior most uh, one chief justice and uh, four senior most uh, judges of Supreme Court from with uh, with the appointment of uh, uh, Dr. Y V D Y Chandrachud. Uh, Chief Justice of India, the collegium, the number of members will be increased from uh, 5 to 6 as per uh, articles published in the uh, net. So now coming to the uh, qualification is over. Now next we wish we have to take up uh, independence of judiciary, crucial points about uh, independence of judiciary. When uh, in case one and the Bharati case, Supreme Court made it very clear the member, the parliament can amend any part of the constitution, uh, but uh, the basic structure of the constitution cannot be curtailed. But uh, the parliament at that time said that uh, any part of the constitution can be amended by the parliament and its power of uh, Article 368, but the basic structure cannot be curtailed and it did not define anything about the basic structure. Subsequently, very two, three items were covered in the basic structure. In course of time, many more items have been covered. Rule of law has been included as a basic structure. Independence of judiciary has been included as a structure. Article 21 has been included as a basic structure. Right to education, right to pollution free environment. Many, so many items have been included in and this basic structure so that is why that is why independence of judiciary also has been uh, has been uh, uh, included in basic structure so the parliament by passing any legislation cannot curtail the independence of judiciary but uh, the uh, judges of high courts and supreme court uh, to ensure independence of judiciary must be absolutely free from the interference or encroachment of uh, executive or legislature so that the judges of high courts and supreme court will be able to uh, discharge their duties to the best satisfaction of all concerned and to uh, ensure the ideals and goals enshrined in indian constitution that is about since to ensure independence of judiciary the con so many constitutional measures have been taken 
Number one is mode of appointment. I already told you the uh, uh, judges appointment, the uh, appointment of judges of High Court and Supreme Court are not made so easily by, they are not made by executive, they are made by uh, collegium of uh, Supreme Court collegium and uh, state government, uh, state level High Court collegium in case of High Court uh, judges also. But uh, the executive, uh, even uh, Supreme High Court uh, Chief Minister or Prime Minister is not, uh, is away from this uh, appointment of uh, High Court judges and uh, Supreme Court judges as per this uh, constitution. Then security of tenure. Security of tenure means when uh, any employee is fearful uh, to employer or any other higher official, uh, why he is fearful? He has the threat of uh, yeah, job. He may be suspend, he may suspend him, he may uh, stop increments or anything. That is the threat. For the threat only, any employee may be lowered and uh, become uh, may get prepared to commit any wrong as per the instructions of the superior. But that situation is not there in case of High Court judges or Supreme Court judges. The High Court judges and Supreme Court judges need not worry about their term of office because they cannot be removed so easily. When once the impeachment, uh, when once the question of removal of High Court judges or Supreme Court judges takes place, an, uh, an impeachment move before Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha is to be initiated and uh, this can be done only by two-third majority of uh, uh, members of uh, Lok Sabha and uh, Rajya Sabha present and voting. So that is the security of tenure. The next uh, fixed term sex uh, service condition. The Supreme Court judges and High Court judges are uh, uh, have uh, the good, uh, service, good service condition. They have a lot of privileges like uh, salary and uh, other emolument and they uh, they will be uh, the Supreme Court judges can continue in office. <coughs> <coughs> till attaining the age of 65 years. Similarly, High Court judges can continue in office till attaining the age of uh, 62 years. Next sticks to this. So the all the salaries and other relevances of uh, High Court judges, uh, uh, Supreme Court judges are uh, made from uh, Consolidated Fund of India. The Consolidated Fund of India is the most uh, important uh, fund. Uh, then uh, uh, the, 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 say from this uh, Consolidated Fund of India for High Court uh, Supreme Court judges and Consolidated Fund of the respective state. From this fund only, all uh, salaries and other allowances of uh, High Court judges are made. So that is why there is no any problem. The judges' uh, salaries and allowances uh, cannot be stopped so easily except in financial emergency. That is emergency period and uh, their uh, uh, the High Court judges and Supreme Court judges are fully ensured with their salary, emoluments and uh, other uh, allowances. Next one thing is uh, the conduct of uh, judges uh, cannot be discussed. Here according to Article 105 of uh, uh, Indian Constitution, uh, whatever is spoken within the four walls of uh, uh, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Suppose uh, we are seeing, sometimes we are seeing in uh, TV, uh, TV and uh, there is a lot of uh, quarrels between uh, members of Lok Sabha or even Rajya Sabha and uh, in that uh, quarrel and uh, conflicts uh, the Lok Sabha members may criticize uh, the uh, some any chief minister or any uh, ministers of other states and uh, similarly in state legislatures uh, the members of state legislature legislative assembly or legislative council they may criticize the uh, conduct of uh, any central officials I mean central ministers or prime minister or anything whatever is has been spoken within the four walls of uh, state as uh, state assembly state legislative council uh, uh, so uh, Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, they are absolutely privileged from a defamation suit. Suppose uh, in a uh, Lok Sabha, uh, one MP has uh, said wrong about one chief minister. If that uh, that MP uh, will give information to this chief minister, so and so MP spoke bad about you, then chief minister cannot file a defamation case against that MP who spoke who spoke wrong against uh, this chief minister. Similarly, if any MLA or MLC spoke wrong about one uh, uh, central minister or uh, MP or somebody in central level and uh, this MLA or MLC will uh, give information about uh, this to that MP or minister and that man also cannot do. Because whatever they speak within the four walls of uh, central legislation, 
legislatures and state legislature they are absolutely privileged no action can be filed no defamation suit can be filed that type of uh, privilege they are members are enjoying similarly when he high court judge has nobody in the, he, so yeah, so wrong can be spoken in uh, four uh, within four walls but uh, no wrong can be spoken in a uh, uh, assembly or uh, 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 state legislature sir so one can speak wrong about uh, mla mp mini central minister state minister everything within those uh, four bodies but uh, but uh, in even in the they are absolutely uh, exempted from defamation case but anybody speaks wrong about high court judge or supreme court judge or other judges uh, they are not absolutely they are not exempted from that so similarly if any judgment even an young uh, judge gave any judgment the senior most advocate should not comment uh, uh, about his judgment uh, the, then uh, appeal appeal can be preferred suppose when a newly appointed judge is there in lower court and just a man of 25 year when once he enters to the enters into the chamber and all the lawyers and other members in the court hall must stand up and show respect because there may be an advocate senior most leading advocate of more than 70 years or 80 years uh, drawing you 1 crore rupees for one case even such man also must stand up and show respect because he cannot say that this judge is younger than my son i need not stand like that he should not say so like that uh, here whatever uh, the nobody either mlas or mps or whomsoever they may uh, speak about the conduct of other members of other politician but they must not speak about the conduct of uh, high court judges or supreme court judges that is a one for power and uh, article 105 in parliament uh, the members can speak wrong about other politician but they must not speak wrong about the judges in uh, state level assemblies and councils uh, under article 194 uh, one can speak wrong about uh, conduct of other uh, uh, politician but they must not speak wrong about judges so these are the various things so here ban on practice after retirement so there is supreme court yes judges after their retirement they should not do any practice that is this is one thing the power to punish contempt so because if anybody speaks any wrong about uh, uh, judges uh, criticizes the judgment or anything uh, the supreme courts and high courts and also lower courts are having the power uh, to punish civil and criminal liabilities there for contempt of court for example the uh, judge has given some judgment a lawyer is not satisfied he should prefer appeal but he should not speak wrong this judge doesn't know anything his judgment is wrong such things he should not do if he does so it constitutes it attracts contempt of court for your for contempt of court that lawyer or any other person will have civil liability or criminal liability one must maintain a pin drop silence in court halls if any is there they must switch off the cell phone if they say cell phone is rung knowingly or unknowingly it constitutes contempt of court the judge may put him fine or any other liability uh, any other liability may be imposed that the power of uh, the judges are not only from lower court but also high court judges and supreme court judges are empowered with the power to uh, punish the persons for contempt of uh, court recently in the supreme court uh, awarded one ru <coughs> <coughs> one rupee fine to uh, prasant boshan i think supreme court very leading uh, uh, judge supreme court there was a lot of debate regarding the contempt of court of uh, prasant boshan uh, senior advocate supreme court the supreme court wanted to punish him uh, for contempt of court after a lot of uh, discussion and negotiation just ru one rupee fine was uh, awarded and he was uh, requested to uh, pay that uh, one rupee fine this is the practice but in such uh, uh, one rupee fine may not be made possible even in lowest court for contempt of court next one is uh, this is uh, with reference to freedom uh, 
freedom to appoint staff freedom to appointment appoint staff here he say he generally the state government servants are appointed by the state government service commission state service commissions are there central service commissions or upsc is there in central level state commissions are there in state level but the appointment of judges is made by high court only <coughs> district uh, sub subordinate court appointments are filled by the uh, high court judges through uh through the district judge and uh, other various courts for high court and uh, supreme court they are filled in by the judges of uh, high courts and supreme court only the state government will not uh, uh, interfere they, they are not appointed by the state service commission or central service commission so the freedom to appointment staff uh, is done by the judges uh, judges only and uh, next uh, the jurisdiction the jurisdiction of supreme court cannot be curtailed the parliament by any act uh, parliament can increase the jurisdiction and powers of the supreme court but uh, the parliament by any act or initiative cannot reduce the powers of the supreme court so the parliament if so think it can increase the powers it can increase the uh, jurisdiction but it should not reduce the jurisdiction it should not uh, uh, reduce the powers of the supreme court judges and ultimately the fundamental principle of independence of judiciary is separation from executive and uh, judiciary the doctrine of uh, separation of power the concept of independence of judiciary was coined by the concept of uh, judicial separation of power was enunciated as envisaged by uh, french French jurist Montesquieu, with an independent, with an inclination to make judiciary independent from executive and legislature. This so-called uh, to ensure rule of law and uh, strict adherence to the rule of law and independence of judiciary. The doctrine of separation of power was coined by French jurist Montesquieu, and the same was uh, overwhelmingly accepted by uh, American uh, father. and uh, this doctrine of separation of power was uh, acknowledged and uh, implemented in uh, america but it it, it is not adopted in uh, uk but however in india it is partly followed an independence of judiciary in india has been uh, enlisted in uh, by <coughs> and basic structure and so many privileges and immunities have been conferred on high court judges and supreme court judges to act independently to deliver pure and impartial justice and the next thing is this is with reference to independence of judiciary and all these over and uh, now next one is uh, i told you 1990 uh, who, uh, the judges who faced impeachment were 1990 to 93 justice v r ramaswamy uh, 9 to 2018 2018 Deepak Mehta Chief Justice of India and uh, uh, Justice uh, Sumitra Sen uh, Calcutta High Court when the before uh, uh, impeachment move was made she resigned in 2015 uh, uh, 2015 uh, 2015 uh, J B Paridwala Gujarat High Court judge also faced impeachment move in 2017 uh, in 2017. Uh, the states of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, C V Nagarjuna Reddy, uh, just C V Nagarjuna Reddy faced this uh, impeachment move. In P D Dinakaran, the Chief Justice of uh, uh, Sikkim High Court also faced impeachment move. However, the impeachment moves were defeated. So far, no high court, no high court judge or Supreme Court judge has been removed from uh, service on the uh, against impeachment. Uh, Move. So this is the uh, with re- various issues with reference to uh, independence of judiciary. Now jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. The jurisdiction, the Supreme Court of India is the apex court of uh, the country. It is competent and empowered to try all cases, so civil, criminal, uh, civil, criminal, uh, civil, criminal appeals, all what not every case. It has the power of review. It has a. Uh, it can uh, issue various issue issues. Ah, uh, it can. Ah, uh, it is Supreme Court of India is the custodian of fundamental rights. To Supreme Court of India is solved with the responsibility of uh, uh, uplifting the ideals and goals enshrined in direct principles of state policy. So many things are there. A notable points with regard to the Supreme Court uh, jurisdiction. 
let us discuss. The Supreme Court of India is the highest court that is the original jurisdiction. There are so many cases uh, can be filed uh, directly in Supreme Court uh, subject to the pecuniary value of subject to the important. For example, uh, the Supre uh, in Supreme Court, how uh, lower courts uh, issue injunctions, uh, the Supreme Court issues uh, five kinds of writs. There, there are five kinds of writs, writ of uh, habeas corpus, mandamus, uh, uh, prohibition, uh, uh, sessionary, co warranto There are five kinds of writs. Uh, all these five writs uh, I explained in detail in the administrative law and alternative dispute resolution system. The Supreme, suppose anybody is arrested unlawfully, he can directly approach the Supreme Court uh, and the Supreme Court by issuing the writ of habeas corpus direct that state government or prison authority to release him immediately and it also imposed damage it will also direct the state government or prison authorities to pay compensation and a disciplinary action against the person <coughs> who made illegal arrest the relevant cases on this point are Bhim Singh vs. State of Jammu and Kashmir Ronald Shah vs. State of Bihar these cases also I explained long back long back and uh, then uh, uh, the Supreme Court interpretation of the, the, Supreme, the uh, Supreme Court has applied jurisdiction. The Supreme Court is competent to hear appeals from all high court judges. Uh, so all high courts, civil matters, criminal matters in certain cases with certification by the high courts and without certification by high court. And uh, the uh, Supreme Court can hear appeals of uh, death sentence uh, confirmed by the high courts. And uh, the Supreme Court can commute death sentence into life imprisonment and uh, it can confirm the Supreme Court when a death sentence comes, uh, it can review the uh, cases of its own. When once the judgment is given by the Supreme Court, and a single bit judgment can be corrected by a division bench, division bench uh, judgment can be corrected by constitutional bench judge. When once uh, if the death sentence is confirmed by uh, Supreme Court, and it went to uh, President Office for a commutation into life imprisonment, if the delay, if there is inordinate delay in a President Office. To give uh, accord uh, mercy uh, to uh, consider the mercy petition and uh, the death sentence uh, uh, was not communicated for a long time in president office president's office it can the supreme court can call call for it uh, back to supreme court and then the supreme court can uh, commute the death sentence into life in the life imprisonment and a uh, curative uh, so many things are there uh, the supreme court uh, uh, can then uh, this is another type interpretation of the constitution all civil matters all criminal matters so supreme court is absolutely competent to decide any case re reference revision review and uh, issue of writs and all these things the supreme court of india can do it and next thing is uh, interpretation of constitution interpretation of constitution is the, uh, the main role of uh, high court judges and supreme court judges a judge to be active uh, a judge to be active, he must be a, he must skillfully interpret the constitution. The judges are the judges while delivering the judgment are expected to interpret law. Suppose uh, while, while interpreting law, suppose a particular law, particular principle from legislation is to be applied in a particular case, the judges must be very carefully analyze what is the purpose of that particular law, what is the intention of the legislators. What is the uh, how best they will be able to apply that particular principle law into that particular cases without uh, curtailing uh, in, in the interest of pure and impartial justice is to be done. You know, when a, when a law is to be made, the law commission will prepare the law after a lot of debates. So it is sent to the Ministry of Home Affairs. The Ministry of Home Affairs will send it to Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha and then President of India. After uh, approval or assent by President of India, the bill on a particular law will go back to Ministry of Home Affairs and the Ministry of Home Affairs will take steps to for its publication in official gadget. While publishing uh, in official gadget, then only that law will come into post. From what date, what day for, for, for a, what area that law is applicable? For what area the law is not applicable? For what are the uh, what are the provisions are to be implemented immediately? What are the provisions to be implemented very late? What is the content? What is the contention of the uh, makers of the car, makers of that law? What is the content? What is the object behind but that uh, particular legislation? All these aspects are to be taken into consideration, and this process is called interpretation of uh, any law. The constitutional provisions are, uh, should be interpreted. Then the law, the provisions of various laws, central laws or state laws, are to be interpreted by the judges. While interpreting the law, 
if to decide a particular case the judges are expected to possess sound knowledge unless the like, judges possess sound knowledge in particular high court judges and supreme court judges they won't be able to uh, interpret law so effectively and deliver pure and impartial justice that is why the judges are supposed to possess very good knowledge sound knowledge while interpreting the law the supreme court is competent to interpret various laws next one is special leave to appeal 136 this is what is called lawyers paradigm there are some cases there is ml life and death cases are there suppose uh, some university or any company appointed uh, some appointment some irregularities took place the candidate who could not get selected uh, filed a writ of mandamus in a high court or even a supreme court a supreme court then uh, the the court uh, uh, can uh, strike down the selection suppose the high court uh, Uh, suppose some uh, uh, university appointments are made this appointment the candidate who could not get merit candidate who could not get uh, challenged it the selection in high court the high court uh, uh, set aside the uh, selection that means who those candidates who got selected will have to vacate the office they will be rendered jobless such <coughs> <coughs> selected candidate will rush to supreme court uh, uh, invoking uh, benefit under article uh, 130 136 special leave to appeal then the supreme court uh, hears that particular case will give stay order on uh, uh, ca- cancellation of the appointment and that is why suppose if any multi story building is constructed illegally it is to be decision is taken to co- to collapse it in uh, one week or like that in that case the builder of that particular building may approach uh, supreme court under a special leave petition article 136 then the supreme court may give stay order so this is why this is the most important power of the supreme court uh, to hear appeals especially appeals finally the uh, advisory jurisdiction article 143 of indian constitution confers on supreme court uh, advisory jurisdiction in times of need the president of india in certain crucial issues will not be able to where the court there were such particular matters executive legislature otherwise will go up to the tune of president of india the matter could not be so clear, cleared so easily then the president of india will refer this matter to the supreme court for advisory opinion then the supreme court of india under article 1143 has been vested with this uh, uh, advisory jurisdiction and the supreme court gives give some proper uh, uh, guidance and uh, the uh, president of india may follow or may not follow this the best example on this sometimes conflict between uh, judiciary and uh, legislature takes place judiciary and legislature takes place in kajura case 1979 and uh, in kajura's case legal history conflict between supreme court and supreme council took place and that in those days the british parliament passed the act of settlement uh, the act of settlement 1774 and resolved that issue in 1980s uh, some conflict be- took place between supreme court and legislative council of andhra pradesh what happened in this case was the enadu uh, founder and uh, chief editor ramoji rao ji made a publication there was some publication in uh, enadu paper that peddala uh, galata means uh, elders quarrel errors elders quarrel was published in newspaper so here in the at that time in andhra pradesh there were two houses lower houses and uh, lower house and upper house lower house was legislative assembly upper house was uh, Uh, legislative council there were uh, the quarrel between uh, some members in legislative council was published in enodu paper for making such publication the chief editor uh, the then chief editor c ramoji rao ji uh, action was taken by the legislative council and directed the commissioner of police hyderabad then sri prabhakar rao ji to go and arrest uh, uh, ramoji rao and uh, a disciplinary action was uh, initiated by the legislative council meanwhile professor uh, ramoji rao ji flew for delhi and uh, obtained anticipatory blame so the then uh, prabhakar rao uh, uh, police commissioner was in an humiliating situation 
if he arrests it amounts to contempt of court if he doesn't detain and uh, doesn't arrest it amounts to content of house he was in this position the, then uh, with the initiative of the then chief minister nt ramarao ji the matter was uh, referred to a uh, supreme court and the matter remained pending but no action was taken it is it was very difficult to say whether supreme court is uh, superior whether legislative council is superior this uh, conflict was resolved long back in british regime when this uh, conflict between the uh, supreme court and the supreme council reached its climax in uh, uh, kajura case raja nandkumar case and uh, then uh, uh, it was resolved by act of settlement but in india this matter still pending and uh, the matter is still pending subsequently borababu case also uh, the speaker uh, this uh, conflict between uh, council and uh, judiciary took place it also remained un uh, unsettled so these are the various issues with reference to the in addition to the such issues crucial issues the supreme court of india so many matters on income tax so many matters on uh, uh, yeah, member tp act monopoly restrictive trade practices act uh, customs act so many legislation so many issues are referred to supreme court of india the president of india refers uh, so many matters uh, relating to sac section and other to the supreme court of india when the supreme court of india by virtue of article 143 of indian constitution gives any direction and uh, gives any advisory opinion it is followed and another last thing is uh, the judicial uh, the supreme the judges of high court and supreme court are conferred enormous powers so i forgot to tell one important point the high court judges and the supreme court judges are competent to set aside <coughs> executive action by state government uh, legislative action by state legislature executive action by central parliament uh, central government legislative action by uh, central law so they are vested with such a power so in mrs indira gandhi in 1977 mrs indira gandhi was defeated when uh, <coughs> see see uh, the rival of uh, mrs indira gandhi was rajana rayan mrs indira gandhi one of the very few most powerful prime minister and most dynamic my uh, dearest dynamic and most eminent eminent prime minister of india in the history of uh, india she made a remarkable contribution she ruled india for uh, nearly one and a half decades as the prime minister and uh, uh, in uh, 1971 elections her opponent sri rajnarayan filed a case in uh, uh filed a case uh, in rajiv bareilly and then the matter went up to allahabad high court i mean uh, so he made some allegations against mrs gandhi that she misused her power she and she resorted to some irregularities to win the election the irregularities uh, made by, made by mrs gandhi were proved and justice sinha ji jagmohan lal sinha the then judge high court allahabad uh, declared had election uh, Uh, invalid and uh, rendered her unfit to contest for 6 years uh, in uh, ensuing elections and uh, she was required to vacate the office within a uh, fixed time and mrs gandhi became very angry she brought about their drastic changes in indian constitution in a process of amendment and appointment of uh, chief justice and all and immediately when she as she was asked to immediately she uh, she uh, uh, she uh, she requested then president of india fakhruddin ali ahmed ji uh, to impose uh, uh, emergency during the period of emergency one cannot approach the court even if the fundamental right is cut tied a fundamental right is cut tied because the supreme court of india one more power of supreme court of india is the supreme court of india is the custodian of fundamental rights it is the it is the guardian of direct principles of state policy whatever ideals and goals the states are required to do the supreme court must see that the state should implement it carefully and this particular case what happened was uh, mrs gandhi through then uh, president of india introduced emergency so that uh, nobody can question any act and uh, she could not uh, so that she could uh, avoid vacation of office and uh, later uh, emergency emergency followed uh, then uh, the to uh, to prefer her ap- appeal to prefer appeal <coughs> <coughs> from allahabad high court to supreme court uh, the uh, the she so proceeding three senior most judges so proceeding three senior more judges fourth senior most judge ak a 
A.N. Ray was appointed as Chief Justice of India. These three senior most judges filed a written petition, but helplessly they resigned the job, resigned their jobs respectively for ignoring seniority. The practice, consistent practice to make elevate Chief Justice is the senior most judge of Supreme Court is to be elevated for the post of senior most uh, for the Chief Justice of India in order to get benefit. The three senior judges were uh, outweighted and fourth senior judge A. N. Ray was uh, uh, promoted as uh, uh, Chief Justice of India and so many drastic changes were brought about by Mrs. Gandhi. So many amendments took place uh, bringing about so many changes as to the power of the parliament and uh, to protect her. Uh, some other officials, uh, vice president, uh, speaker and uh, prime minister also were added. So many things are there. If you see the amendment in uh, amendment uh, lecture, I delivered so many things. So these are the, in spite of that, the judgment of uh, uh, Jagmohan Sinha in 1970, if five as to the irregularities made by Mrs. Gandhi, the most powerful, dynamic, daring, dashing Prime Minister of India, uh, could survive temporarily uh, by imposing emergency and bringing about so many constitutional amendments. But she could, she could not be free from the clutches of the judgment of Justice Jagmohan Sinhaji in 1975. In the following elections of 1975, Janata government, Jan Janata party was constituted as opposition party. And then Jai Prakash Narayan and uh, the leader, uh, one of the uh, most prominent leaders of Janata party campaigned all over country and uh, visualized the irregularities prevailed at that time and ultimately Mrs. Gandhi, Srimati Indira Gandhi herself was defeated by then Rajana Arayanji in Rai Bareilly constituency as a primary position of uh, Lok Sabha and uh, Janata government came to power. So despite though she would able to uh, protect herself for time being, ultimately she was uh, defeated uh, uh, defeated by Janata government in 1977 elections. So this is what is the significance, important greatness of the uh, judges and the power. Such a great power are conferred on High Court judges and Supreme Court judges. It is the duty of every member of uh, a legal fraternity to take initiative and to acquire more and more knowledge and uplift the ideals and goals of our uh, legal profession which are which is described as uh, the bench and bar which are described as the two wheels of the chariots of justice and uh, it is our minimum responsibility to take care of pin about most prestigious course of our legal education to acquire more in knowledge more and more knowledge dear friend thank you very much for your patient hearing thanks a lot